Hi, everyone. Uh, today, I'm t uh, going to talk about the, the so-called uh, rope swing. Uh, this is the rope I made uh, uh, two days ago. And um, I used the rope swing for uh, two main purposes. The first purpose is to uh, establish a reasonable uh, swing plane. So when you uh, swing the rope back and forth continuously, and if you can maintain a consistent plane both ways, then that means uh, uh, that's uh, your swing plane. So let's see how, how it goes. Uh, it is always easy, uh, easy uh, or easier to uh, throw the rope slightly toward the target first and then start the swing. Uh, in doing this, instead of using your arms a lot, try to use your, your lower body more so that um, you can consistently uh, swing the rope back and forth. So if you can maintain very consistent swing plane both ways, that means uh, you, are, uh, you got rid of all the unnecessary movements. So your body uh, as a whole uh, try to uh, provide this consistent swing plane. So uh, that's uh, what's important. And then in doing the rope swing, uh, you can always uh, control uh, the slope of the uh, plane uh, to a certain extent. So if you want to maintain a bit more upright uh, plane or uh, flatter plane, you can certainly do that. But uh, it has to be uh, uh, basically a function of uh, your swing pad. Uh, some people may uh, uh, lift the arm quite a bit here, but still you should be able to maintain a consistent swing plane here. So I'm not going to uh, say here which, which plane is better, but uh, it depends on your sw swing style. So if you uh, tend to uh, um, raise your arms uh, high, then again, uh, f uh, based on that, you should be able to maintain the, uh, a, a consistent swing plane. And then if you want to uh, keep it uh, flatter, uh, then uh, you can certainly do that. So uh, fairly uh, turning the, the shoulders back and forth and then bring the rope along the shoulder line here. Like this. So flatter swing plane here, and then a bit steeper swing plane here. So uh, again, uh, it's a function of uh, your swing style. Uh, and uh, one aspect you need to pay attention to is uh, opening of the chest early. So uh, when the rope is uh, around, your, uh, around your body here, and on the way down, if you open your chest early, then you tend to have a more open plane. So it is important to uh, uh, start the downswing with a more closed uh, shoulder position so that uh, you can, again, maintain a consistent swing plane here instead of opening and then pulling the rope inward. The second purpose of the rope swing is to control the overall timing of the uh, transition. So if you uh, have a tendency of uh, rushed downswing, then before the rope is completely wrapping around your body, then you start pulling the rope down. So uh, something like this. So uh, before uh, the rope is completely going around your body, when you uh, pull the rope down, the, uh, you know, while the arms are moving down, the rope is uh, hitting your body. Like this. So again, let me repeat this uh, several times and then show you uh, this motion. So something like this. So uh, we have to uh, wait until the rope goes around your body and then uh, finishes here, then start the downstream. So this will give you more time uh, at the end of the backswing, and then you will have a mature transition from the backswing to downswing. So uh, whenever you rush down, you tend to use your arms a lot. So by waiting until the uh, backswing is uh, matured, then let it go by using the body. Uh, this is really important. And another aspect is um, if you are on the way back, if you stop somewhere here, let just the rope go here, that the rope will hit your body. Just, it will just uh, drop on your body. So, 
Okay. This is because uh, your upper body pretty much just, uh, stops here and then ropes, <laughs> because of the uh, inertia, the ropes keeps going and then hit your body like this. But this is not uh, you know, the ideal one. You have to have a continuous backswing motion. So they let the end of the rope go around your body and they end up somewhere here. Okay. So uh, again, depending on the uh, slope of the swing plane, uh, the rope may you know, uh, cross uh, you know, the uh, upside of the shoulder or side of the shoulder here, but um, where you, uh, it crosses the shoulder and then ends up somewhere here under the armpit. So uh, let the rope uh, you know, go around your body and then uh, ends up here, then start the downswing. So, uh, wait until it goes around. And then in doing this, when you just, just wait, then it means a pause. But actually what happens is uh, uh, during the backswing, you will shift away from the target and then you will have a recentering motion here. So although you are waiting for uh, the rope, uh, you know, uh, uh, going around your body, but still your body is uh, uh, doing this uh, recentering motion. So your body never stops. It's a continuous motion, but simply, uh, you know, uh, to not rush down. That's the, the key point here, again. And also, in doing the rope swing, uh, how much uh, arm action you have depends on how much uh, shoulder turn you have. So if you uh, tend to uh, uh, turn more, then you don't have to use your arms much. But uh, as you can see, I'm, uh, I'm uh, quite uh, uh, stiff, so I uh, lack flexibility. So I don't uh, turn my shoulder enough. So I, ten I have the tendency of uh, using my arms to a certain extent. So it's uh, basically a trade-off uh, between the uh, shoulder turn and the arm action. So if you uh, intentionally turn more, then on the way down, you can also use the shoulder turn to throw the rope or if uh, you have less uh, turn, then you tend to use the arms here. That's uh, what I'm doing, but um, you know, always uh, it's uh, important to have enough uh, shoulder turn, continuous shoulder turn, and on the way down, you can also take advantage of the shoulder turn instead of uh, using the arms early. So again, so I'm uh, exaggerating my uh, shoulder turn here. Yeah, uh, but uh, I lack flexibility, so uh, you know, unconsciously, uh, I always uh, try to use my arms. But you can uh, play with uh, the, uh, the amount of shoulder turn and also the involvement of the arms, and you can come up with a comfortable uh, combination of the two. And you can introduce uh, several uh, variations to the rope swing. Uh, for example, uh, you can choke up intentionally, so uh, make it uh, shorter and then you can increase the tempo, uh, something like this. And then use your body, and try to uh, have a continuous but uh, relatively uh, faster motion here. Or you can have a uh, you know, longer one, and then bigger rotation, a slower tempo here. This is also possible. And you can introduce the steps if you want, you can introduce the steps. Also, you can have a side steps. So, so if I uh, summarize, uh, again, I uh, use the rope swing uh, for two main purposes. The first one is to establish a reasonable swing plane, and then to be able to uh, move the rope along the swing plane consistently uh, back and forth. So that way you will be able to eliminate a lot of unnecessary movements. So when you, when you use the actual club, then you manipulate the uh, club motion, uh, e even if you have uh, some uh, unnecessary movements. But uh, with the rope, you cannot do that. Uh, so um, you have to guide the rope properly so that the rope can uh, move along the swing plane. So this way you can actually eliminate a lot of uh, unnecessary uh, movements. And then the second purpose, 
uh, is to uh, control the, uh, the timing of the uh, transition. So uh, uh, it is important to have a mature uh, transition. That means uh, you have to un wait until okay, the, uh, you have enough uh, transition and then uh, uh, start the downswing instead of uh, rushing down. Uh, during the transition phase, what we expect is a sort of a sequential uh, transition of the body parts. So the pelvis changes the direction of rotation first, and then the thorax, shoulders, arms, and then the club. So that's what we expect. But actually also during the transition phase, the lower body will work with the ground, and then uh, you can actually generate large amount of torque uh, so that uh, you can uh, start the downswing with a really good uh, initial condition. So uh, the transition phase is uh, more than just a sequential transition, but the, actually in terms of the gopher ground interaction, this transition phase is really important. So in the future episode, I will uh, uh, talk about what happens during the um, transition phase. Thank you.